Hey Zen fam, it's time to talk about Ubisoft, but before I do, as always I'd like to encourage you to remember to rate, favourite, comment, share and of course subscribe. Right, let's get down to some brass tacks here. Over the last little while there have been an innumerable amount of videos regarding some of the, shall we say, less than stellar decisions by Ubisoft in its development of some recent titles. For instance, uh, the most recent Ghost Recon. Oof. I mean, I didn't think much of it when I saw E3, but uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, I played Wildlands and very much enjoyed it. It got a bit dry in the middle, but it was a decent game. But something about this new one, I didn't really much care for the setting or the ideas behind it, but it did look from the trailers that it was going to be alright. Then we all saw the what happened with it with the microtransaction bonanza and the sloppy AI and the glitches and all the rest of it. And then Ubisoft has like, come out and say, right, pretty much every game we're putting out for 2019 we're pushing back considerably and then the share prices and it's just been an unholy mess and a lot of people are like well Ubisoft to get what they deserve because they're doing all the microtransactions and they keep doing the same game over and over and over and it's just not working anymore and there is some validity to this but what I would say is as someone that I personally consider myself to be, I wouldn't go, go as far as to call myself an Ubisoft fan, but I do have a, an appreciation for their work. I have played a stupidly large amount of Ubisoft games over the years. I mean, you can check my trophies if you like. I mean, I have had a lot of fun thanks to Ubisoft. You know, they've really entertained me over the years. I mean, they've given me the the Assassin's Creed games, which I have adored. Admittedly, I never got to play Unity, but then from what I could understand, it's probably just as well. But I've played pretty much every other Assassin's Creed, apart from Bloodlines and the one with the lassie set in the same period as uh, Assassin's Creed 3, which was for the Vita. And the only reason I never got to play that is because my wife got it for me for Christmas, but the guy who sold it online sent a different game instead and uh, contacted the seller and contacted the person that got Assassin's Creed, but for some reason couldn't get my game and he couldn't get his game and he just kept my game and I got his game, which was a game I didn't want. <laughs> anyway. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I love things like Eagle Flight and I've got uh, the Star Trek VR bridge, bridge Crew game which is brilliant fun. I should really play more of that. My mate Dave is always going, dude you should play this because we could do it together and I, I know what I need to do. I need to get a bit of money and like put some PlayStation credit in the machine and then get the next generation pack and all that. And just, Ubisoft don't know how to do really good stuff when they really, you know, get about it. I mean, I really liked Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I know it's not a popular game, but I liked it. And, you know, obviously I played both Watch Dogs and as you all know from recent videos at E3, I was very, very excited by the prospect of Watch Dogs Legion. I really liked the idea and I was very much looking forward to it. Now, admittedly, I wasn't going to get the special edition with the ugly helmet mask thing because I was like I just didn't want that in my house just thought it looked terrible but even then I was a bit worried about it because there was all this digital stuff that was coming with it which was similar to all the digital stuff that came with too but just more so but I just thought that was just you know one of these things that a lot of games do now not just Ubisoft where they bring a whole bunch of digital stuff that you don't really care that much about and you know it isn't really going to do that much for the gaming experience 
and you just go well I'll wait for it to come on sale and maybe pick it up later or you know maybe wait a little while and get a game of the year edition if the game sells enough you know you play it smart if you're an older gamer you've you've been around the block you've seen the figure too you know it's not always necessary to go get the mad expensive super uber version although admittedly yes I love the division and I did buy and I'll box you guys of course my copy of Division 2 when I got the Dark Zone edition and my statue still sits up there and still looks awesome and I still love playing the Division 2 I don't play as much as I used to but I do love it so when I say the things I'm getting ready to say Ubisoft if you see this please know this comes from a place a good place okay I like your work you're not perfect well both I think we can both be big enough to admit that you're not perfect but I like a lot of what you do the Far Cry games have been interesting you know not really my scene for most of them especially the first one although I think you kind of went a wee bit off the boil when you did the primal and you basically ripped them out from four <laughs> but you know these these are just things that happened, you know. And of course, we're all looking forward to Beyond Good and Evil Two. But I think it is fair to say that, like, you need to calm it down a bit on the microtransactionness. Okay. Now, I personally don't mind your your game is being delayed. A delayed game means it has more time to become a better game. We all know this. I mean, that's what the community is basically saying as regards to Watch Dogs. Oh, sorry. As regards to The Last of Us 2. We've got Naughty, Naughty Dog and Watch Dogs mixed up in my brain there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think a lot of us nowadays have come to the realisation that a game being delayed can, a lot of the time, actually be a good thing because it means more time for the game to be even better. You know, I mean, do you want a game that's out right now with bugs in it, or do you want a game to come out four months down the line and everything works lovely, silky smooth? I think your average gamer is going to go, I'll have the silky smooth version, please. So I think what needs to happen is obviously the, the next few games that are slated for release. I, I honestly think what you need to do, Ubisoft, is do partially what you're doing already. Hold these games back, but not just hold them back and obviously make them that little bit better, but completely remove all the microtransaction nonsense. Completely. And I'll tell you why. Not just because it would be better for the consumer or the gamer. Not because, just because it would, you know, give you less you know, it would make the games more complete. But I think it would raise your public image considerably. I mean, you only have to look at CD Projekt Red and how much the community really appreciates them. I mean, The Witcher, The Witcher 3, had no additional DLC that you paid for. And then when they did introduce the Blood and Wine expansion, it cost nothing. Seriously. It was basically like another game tacked onto the game and it was like it cost absolutely nothing. It was amazing. Now I'm not really a Witcher guy but, you know, look at uh, Cyberpunk 2077. The, the incredible amount of goodwill that that game is garnering and it's not even out. It just looks amazing, you know. Even though I'm Italy myself, I've got off the boil with it a little bit because I was more sold upon the idea of it being a third person action adventure game set in a cyberpunk universe and now it's got all first person. Not that I dislike first person games, I've played many many first person games and enjoyed them greatly. But it's just not what, it's just for me it's not what I was originally sold on. And when you have the idea of a complex character creator, you know, and then you don't see your character. That just sounds like muddled messaging and it sounds like there may be too many cooks possibly spoiling the broth. 
But the important thing is that particular suit is feature complete. And there'll be nothing else added to it. And there'll be no bits and pieces that you that if you don't buy, you can't play the game as well as anybody else. I think that's what really matters, you know. Is you've got to tidy your, your games up, Ubisoft, okay. Too many of your games have a lot of the same bits in them, you know. Like, the reason Wildlands has not been as successful as you would have wanted it is because it's basically, it's a hodgepodge of almost everything else you have. And that's a shame because initially, you know, you were onto something there with that game, but I think you just threw too much at it. You are too many modes, too many ideas, and I think you just confused the issue of what the game could be. You could have stripped down a lot of the aspects out of that, focused in on what the game really could have been doing, and you know, bumped up the gra- bumped up the niceness of the graphics instead of the incredible amount of stuff. And I think you would have ended up with a better game. So, for the next few titles, you know, I say, yep, hold them back, strip out all the microtransaction stuff. And most importantly, Watch Dogs, as much as I would love to be playing it as soon as possible, I think what you need to do is take that to PlayStation 5 completely. Rework the game, you know, purely for PlayStation 5. Because as you may remember, back in the day, Watch Dogs, the first one, was supposed to be for the, a launch title for the PlayStation 4. Now as it was, it was cross-gen, cross-generational. I mean, you could play it on 7th gen and 8th gen. And uh, it was going to be, you know, it was originally on the launch uh, night, launch platform, sorry, the, the day one launch schedule. Because I remember when I originally ordered my PlayStation 4, they asked me what game I wanted to order with it because they had a a pack where you could order a game for it and I went for Watch Dogs because it looked the most awesome and then uh, a few weeks later they you know I got an email from the store going Watch Dogs is no longer part of the launch lineup what other game do you want so then I had to pick something else but I think if Watch Dogs Gets a bit more of a because of all that interesting PlayStation 5 magic and Ubisoft ability when they really knuckle down to make something special because Legion is going to be something very very special I really believe that with what they're doing with the whole you know playable NPCs but that means they're playable but they're not this you know if they take that game right to the max take out any idea of buying stuff separately have everything on the that's in the game in the game no paywall barriers none at all the only way to get things in that game is to play for them take the game back old school lock put everything in it bump up everything turn every, all the dials up to 11 make that game sing on PlayStation 5 you know and Xbox Scarlet and really just go for it and and announce to the world that Ubisoft has learned its lesson that all its games from this point on will be fully fully feature complete no DLC that locks you know game levels and costumes and stuff behind paywalls everything is in the game everything you give your 50 quid boom that's it you have the game you know you could put maybe do things like optional costumes and stuff cosmetics people will live with cosmetics because that's optional if you want to make your character look a particular way you know that doesn't affect the game I think a lot of us out there will live with that we'll go okay that's fair enough I will go with that 
But when you put in things that matter to the gameplay and you put them behind a paywall, I don't think a lot of gamers out there now are going to stand for that. I really don't. We're get Gamers are getting really, really tired of that. I mean, look at how things have been going recently for EA. I mean, look at Amp. <laughs> Dear God. Games are rushed. I mean, you only have to look at a particular wrestling game of late. Yeah. Don't rush your titles. Don't chop your titles to bits. Put everything in on the disc or on the download, whatever you like. Give us feature complete games. Make the games look as nice as you possibly can. Put in a few cosmetic DLCs if you really want to extend the game. And then, I think, not only will you have awesome products that people want to buy, but you will rebuild your reputation with the consumer. This is important, Ubisoft, because I like your work. I really do. And I've enjoyed a great many of your games over the years. So, please... Heed this tiny little YouTuber's words. It may not be the fastest money maker for you, but the goodwill you will build with this, if you go the way I'm talking about, will do you immeasurably more good than selling a few bits of a game parsed off from the main game on drip feed when a lot of people might just don't bother and then some people don't even bother buying the game because it's coming in too many little bits and pieces. Give gamers the full game. Make the games as good as you can. If they have to take another six to eight months, then take another six to eight months. We will wait. And you know why we'll wait? Because we want to play stuff that's good. And not only do we want to play stuff that's good, we're living in a time now where we have tons of games coming at us and tons of games that are really something else there isn't really room anymore for a, a game that's alright games need to be whoa I mean behind me you're seeing Spider-Man we all know how good Spider-Man is you know how good Spider-Man is Ubisoft this is an awesome game I played it twice all right. I am a father, I am a full-time worker, I run a YouTube channel, a Twitch channel, a Snapchat, an Instagram, you know, I've got a Redbubble store that I try to keep making content for, and I played this game twice. Twice. I don't do that very often. But I think, did I not Platinum Spider-Man? I think I might have done. It's like, it's such a good game. And that's what your games need to be. They need to be good. Everybody's games need to be good. It's no good, it's no longer going to be viable for a company to make a game that's alright. You know, it was viable when we had, you know, so called double A games. But now what we have is like indie and triple A. And if you're going to be working in that AAA space, which you mostly tend to do, apart from VR games, VR games stand in a sort of area all their own, then, yeah, you're going to need to step it up a piece of You're going to need to make games that are all singing, all dancing, one size fits all, one price covers all. And once you do that, not only will you have epic stuff, but you'll have stuff that people go, oh yeah, Ubisoft, yeah, they do really interesting stuff, and everything's on the disc, man, it's totally worth it. It's a complete value proposition, and so many hours of gaming. Now, you can still have an Assassin's Creed game with like a million things on the map, you know, a total mad collectathons with towers and, you know, unlockables and, you know, costumes and, you know, memory files and all, go, you know, you can whack in all that crazy stuff. But just don't try to be selling as parts of the game that make the game go better. 
you know because what you do then is you split the pay the player base especially when it's a multiplayer title it's that simple but you've heard this from other youtubers no doubt and you've probably gotten things like this sent to you in emails and tweets and facebook and all the rest of it over the years just take it from a gamer who's been around the block a bit all right I mean, my recent video I was saying about how I'm a 45 year old gamer now and like, I've seen a thing or two. And if there's one thing I want to continue to see, it's stuff from you guys, Ubisoft. I do like what you do. But you've got a reputation to repair. And it is within your hands to do it. I really honestly believe that. Now I've rattled on for like 20 minutes on this video. I, was, I thought this was going to be like a 10 minute video but I think I just got a wee bit involved but um, obviously I'd like your thoughts down below guys, what do you think? Uh, of course at this point I'm now going to flash up the card for the hashtag support your Scottish gamers and uh, close the video in the fashion that I usually do aye nae bother <laughs>